Are you tired of facing the Scandinavian defense? Stick around and by the end of this video, you'll know how to destroy anyone who plays that dreadful opening. All right, we're gonna go ahead and dive right in. So we have e4, d5. This is the Scandinavian defense. All right, quite annoying. One of the more annoying openings you may face out there. Um, it's not, it's very different from the other options you may see black play. You know, they have the Sicilians, the French defenses, the Karakans, standard e5 openings. This is nothing like any of that. Generally speaking, your opponent will expect you to capture the pawn, and then they have a number of options. They could play into some kind of gambit. They could play main line with queen takes pawn. Basically, though, if you take that pawn, you are playing right into your opponent's preparation. And while that is optional, you could do that because it is a good move. There's, there's another way you could do this with a lesser known move, which will completely throw them off. They will not likely have seen it. And you are going to be the one who is more prepared on it than them. So let me show you d4. All right, this is known as the Blackmar Gambit. It's actually a transposition from the Queen's Pawn opening. You know, you could start with d4, d5, and then play e4. Same position. So quite interesting. Generally, they're going to take on e4 because what else are they going to do here, right? They could... I suppose, play e6 and turn it into a French defense. But if they want to play a French, they would have played e6 on the first move. At least you would think. They could play c6 and make it a Karakhan. But again, same reasoning. If they wanted to do that, they would have started with that. So not really worried about that. The only reasonable move is to capture the pawn. And that is best. And now what you're going to do is play knight c3. So you're immediately attacking that pawn. Now, if they don't guard it, then... Okay, well, I guess you recapture and you're totally fine and you just have easy development with your pieces. Very nice, open, spacious position. But of course, vast majority of the time they are going to guard that pawn. So let's go with the more common way, knight f6. All right, now there is a very interesting and very key move to, re to remember here. All right, you want to play f3. And there's a reason for that. And we're going to gradually see what the reason is. It's going to build up later. Um, but basically, they need to take. If they don't take, then and then you have two center pawns, and it's a rather nice position. So they take, you go knight takes, so now you have both of your knights developed. You hopefully get to develop your bishop soon. It's a nice position. Now, most people like to come pin that knight, understandably so. And what I want you to do here is immediately attack that bishop. Don't hold back. Don't wait. Immediately, h3. All right, and then they have two reasonable options. If they retreat to h5, you're going to get a pretty nice position where you actually go g4, and there's no good sacrifice here. If they sacrifice, you are up material. If they retreat as they should, put your knight in the center. Generally, they'll play e6, and that is the best move. Go bishop g2, targeting b7. If they let you take that, they're in trouble, so they will likely play c6 to prevent it. Now you go h4, threatening to go h5, and a lot of people will very quickly go h6. Of course, if you play h5, they'll go bishop h7, and you have just cornered them into a mistake, because now after you capture the bishop, they have a glaring weakness on g6. In fact, if you play queen d3 here, they are very low on option, right? If they want to keep this pawn, they either move it, and you know, you take it anyway, so... That's kind of a waste. Or they move the king to f7. Definitely not a place you want your king to be. Especially when the rook just comes over and pins that knight to the king. And then maybe the bishop is coming to the center and you just keep piling onto this pawn. It's a pretty rough position for black. You're going to be very, very happy with the play you're getting here. So let me take you back to this position. If they don't retreat the bishop, chances are they're going to take the knight. And then of course... Queen takes bishop, targeting b7 here. So likely they're going to play c6. This is very, very normal thing to have happen. Now you want to bring this bishop to e3 to guard d4. They'll play e6. Bring this bishop to d3. This is a very well-placed bishop aimed right at h7. And then here, black usually will develop the dark squared bishop to either e7 or b4. We'll take a look at both. Uh, b4, the sharper of the two. You can just ignore that, get castled. If they take, if they don't take, it doesn't really make a difference. Let's suppose that they do take, though, and they castle. We're going for an interesting idea here, all right? A very interesting concept to keep in mind with this position. I want you to play rook f2. Chances are they'll play something like knight on b8 to d7, and then bring this rook over to f1. So you have a triple battery, all right? And then you also have your two bishops aimed at the king's side. So all of your pieces are over here hoping to contribute, basically. All right, and it's 
quite difficult for Black to figure out how to play this, right? If they if they don't come up with something, it seems like White's going to get a pretty nice attack. Bishop g5 could be coming. A queen could come to g3. The rook is looking to aim this way. You know, let's let's say they go for something like rook c8. A reasonable move. Let's let's say White plays queen g3. All right. It, any any move that doesn't focus on the king side here should just be awful. All right, let's let's suppose someone looks at this position with black and thinks, oh, look at that. I'm going to win material. That's a C3 pawn there. Well, that loses material just like that. Because if they recapture with the knight, you recapture with your rook. So you got both of the knights who are a rook and you have a fantastic pressure on their king side. I mean, just look at this. Everything is contributing here. All right. So you're going to have a lot of fun if you get that position. It's going to be really stressful for black to figure it out. Now, let me go back to this move right here. They don't have to go bishop b4. They may go to e7 instead. Same plan. Castle, rook f2. Bring this rook on over here. And you're basically going for the same stuff, right? You're going to be looking at bishop g5, the, the queen g3s of the position. Maybe the knight comes to e4 since you have that option now right this this is a very pleasant position to get i'll give them the standard move like rook c8 again and you're doing all right here oh you could also go g4 if you want and just keep pushing that pawn that could be fun if you are up for it let's push this pawn we're we want all the pressure on this knight we have all this pressure on this file in general and we're just going to keep attacking all right let's say they go queen b6 I believe you can ignore this over here and just play g5 if they take on b2 and i feel like a lot of people could make this mistake you're taking more pieces than they're taking very very nice position to have here and we go back a little bit g5 chances are they are moving that knight I think you would want to trade there yeah you're gonna trade you sacrifice and now we're gonna see how the rooks being over here could help i mean look at this we're getting into some crazy stuff but this is likely going to be winning all right you're technically down material here but you look at this i think the human move would probably be to trade the rooks and then queen takes important to go queen takes and not rook takes and then the king moves over take the bishop this rook is ready to come over and contribute to just very very nice tactical ideas in this position obviously there's a lot that's going into it but that is the potential with it even with black playing quite solid good moves all it's going to take is one unfortunate uh, mishap for black and suddenly they're getting blown off the board so that is the dream position there, the try to get into that position and have all your pieces being active. Very, very nice setup for white. Far more fun than the usual systems you see against the Scandinavian. Now let's go back a little bit all the way here. So again, it's d4 on move two. They will capture, always play knight c3. Now another thing though could be, you know, what if they don't play... What if they don't play knight f6? Just to interject real quick. What if they play f5? Because that is definitely different. And it looks like it's a stronger defense over that pawn. However, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to play f3 just like we did in the other line. And once again, it makes little sense for them to do anything but take. And that's why most people just... There's not really a lot of options that would come to mind here. Because if, if they don't take, you probably will take. Now, they could try knight f6. And then you meet that with bishop g5, and you're just keeping the pressure on them. You're going back and forth until you get your pawn back. And this is still far better than the usual suspects against the Scandinavian. Now we'll come back here. Say that they take, as many, many would. You're going to go knight takes. Queen takes could look tempting, but it's not ultimately going to be worth it. Just go knight takes and develop normally there. They'll go knight f6. And this one, since they do have the pawn here, it wouldn't make as much sense to put the bishop on d3. The bishop would just be staring down at this pawn, not contributing much. So instead, I'm going to have you go all the way out to c4. As look at these light scores. That's the main issue when people play f5 in this line. It very, very much weakens those light squares. Very much opens up the position for us to be able to come in with our bishop and be attacking those squares. So our bishop is feeling really, really good in this position. So now the logical move for black is to play e6. They're going to try to block us off of that diagonal not a big deal because one they just blocked in their own bishop so as much as they just affected our bishop they probably did worse for their own and for another the e6 pawn is not exactly strong which we will come back to for sure for now though simply castle and then you can look at bishop d6 being played here for black very reasonable move however 
throw in knight g5 here, you have more pressure on e6. That's going to be quite nice because you look at this and you go, how do they defend? Not really a lot of options. Uh, they're not moving their king up to defend it. That would be pretty gross. I suppose they could try moving the pawn up. I think you would be a fan of how this plays out, though, with the nice little fork right here. Very reminiscent of the fried liver attack, actually. Now, right here, I think a lot of people would try queen e7. That does guard the pawn. You can't take it, but you could. It just wouldn't be best. Instead, you should just keep attacking, right? They are barely defending it as it is. If you just keep attacking, they're not going to be able to hold on. So you throw in rookie one right here. All right, you have one, two, three pieces attacking e6. They only have two defending. They can't really add a third defender. There's not a good way to do that, which is why most people just give up right here in the castle. But now here you do have to choose wisely how to recapture that pawn. If you were to recapture or capture with the bishop, for example, which is tempting since it is captured with a check, well, they're going to take and then you're going to go knight takes. And I mean, it's a nice position for sure, but that's all it is. You want a pawn? It's even now. It's just even, basically. A little better for you. But we had a better way to play this. Because in this position, if we go knight takes, right, keeping the bishops on the board, this means that we are threatening to just move our knight and reveal a check on the king from the bishop, which means we have all these other tactics set up. Now give them give them a move that saves this rook, for example, because we are threatening that. Say they go rook e8, and now we just go knight takes c7. Check from the bishop. Ooh, we're attacking the queen. We're also forking the rooks. Seems like we're hitting everything there. Now, if they want to not lose that much material, you know, most people are just going to take. Why this is so good, and you should play into this, you go rook takes. And this is why you want to keep the bishop on the board, again, for the attacking chances that you have here, the tactics you're setting yourself up for. Because now you attack the queen. They must move the queen if they want to keep it. Anywhere they move, it, whenever they move the queen, you they immediately have to worry about the bishop on that diagonal attacking the king. In fact, they're going to have to play queen f7 here. Kind of a gross move to play. But the thing is, if they don't block the diagonal, you know, they go anywhere else with their queen. Say they go back to d8. You're playing rook here. You're taking the bishop with a discovered check and attacking the queen. So you just win the queen. So if they want to keep the queen, they have to go here. Give you a move such as queen d3 to guard the bishop. Your goal is to move the rook. So the bishop attacks the queen, pinning it to the king. Quite a nice, nice position. And to take you back all the way here, this is why f5 is very much ill-advised. They just have these... Massive problems on the light squares, essentially for the rest of the game. So that's why most people just stick with knight f6. And again, you go f3, takes, takes. I believe earlier I told you bishop g4 was most popular. I do want to circle back real quick. e6 is also something you may see. It's not going to change things a whole lot. You're going to go bishop d3 to develop. And then they can choose between b4 and e7 to develop their bishop. We're going to go with e7, castle, castle. And now we have a fun idea here. Very fun idea. Well, you want to play. All right, we're going to we're going to look at this and go, OK, maybe now this is why we played F3, because now we don't have that pawn on F2 in the way blocking our queen from coming this way to H4. That's what we're looking to do. All right. I did. I checked the database for this usually plays B6 here, which surprised me a little bit, but it makes it makes sense. They want to develop the bishop. So then white plays queen H4. And the thing is about this position, if black isn't paying attention, they're about to just get completely destroyed. Game over really, really fast. And surprisingly enough, the vast majority of players go bishop b7 right here, paying no mind to what's happening on the king side. In all fairness, white does have to be very accurate to make this work. But after bishop g5, well, the threats are becoming clear. You want to take the knight and then take on h7. You're removing the guard of the h7 pawn. So very normal tactic here. Now, if they were to play rook e8, for example, you just take the knight, they recapture, you take on h7, you got your pawn back, their king is unhappy, that's a win-win right there. Now, of course, the position is far from conclusive, you still have to find moves, go for something like bishop e4, they're not going to resist trading, either they trade or they play a move like c6 or knight c6 and make their bishop terrible, so they're trading. You put your knight in the center, and you can you can just take a look at this. This has to be nice. We're looking to come in this way. At some point, we'd like to move this knight and have our rook attacking on this file. Our queen is still over there affecting things. They don't have anything happening at the moment. You know, the one thing you can point to and say, oh, they could do that is, you know, they could grab this pawn with check. Sure, move out of check. And immediately, you can be looking at knight g5 ideas. Or if you want to go a little, a little differently, you could go rook d1 and pin the bishop. If they just bring the bishop back, you could throw in rook d1 anyway, make the queen move or make the knight block. 
Bring this knight over here. This looks deeply unpleasant for black. You wouldn't even know that they're up a pawn if you looked at the position. Just one quick glance. This does not look winning for black. This looks extremely unpleasant. So there you go. In any case, this is a very promising line. You should absolutely try it out against the Scandinavian because it's, it's quite an annoying opening, the Scandinavian defense, but this is something that your opponents will not expect. You will know it better than them. You will have a very good chance of getting into one of these very, very nice positions that you can play with all these tactical options. So there you go. Congratulations on learning how to punish the Scandinavian defense. If you're interested in learning a new exciting gambit, by the way, click somewhere on the screen here. There's a, a link to a video popping up somewhere. So there you go. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.